Hello everyone, this is Ninja Girl Sakurawen here, and it is time to review Yashihime Princess Hathneven, episode 13, The Delicious Feudal Monk. A very, very good episode for many reasons, but the main one being we have the return of fan favorite characters, Moroku and Songo. They are both back, they are both alive, they are safe, and boy is that a relief. <laughs> It was so good to see them again and know that they're alright. But yeah, this episode begins with a group of monks running into the final member of the Four Perils, Totetsu, who has an ability similar to the wind tunnel where he can suck things in around him and swallow them whole. And unfortunately, that's kind of what happens with these monks, or at least their leader. Their leader goes to attack Totetsu thinking he can stop him with his spiritual powers. And he is instantly eaten. <laughs> and yeah, it was pretty gruesome, honestly. But yeah, that causes his students, because he had a couple with him, to run away. And we see what Sotetsu really wanted. He wanted to find a virtuous monk because apparently they taste quite good to him. And we also see the final rainbow pearl. We see Totetsu has the orange one, and he speaks to it. And he basically uses it to guide him to a truly virtuous monk. So, yeah. We really still don't know what the purpose of these... Um, Rainbow Pearls even are. They have not really elaborated. All we know is that they... They give spiritual... Or not spiritual, they give demons more power. Sort of like the Shikon Jewel did, but I... Again very much doubt that there's a true connection to that, so it's it's very weird. But hopefully we get some more information on their true purpose soon. So yeah, and why they're so coveted? I guess just because of the sheer fact they increase demonic powers. But yeah. Totetsu though, uses his to again guide him to a virtuous monk, and he takes off on something that looks like a gray version of the flying Nimbus. Which I believe Totetsu the way he's designed is a slight reference to a character from Journey to the West, so that fits. I'm not exactly 100% sure, but I believe so. So, yeah. Pretty cool. Yeah. We then see Kohaku, and yeah, he has also been hearing about monks getting attacked and eaten, and he starts worrying about Moroku, obviously, who is participating in an ancient Buddhist training course called the Thousand Day Training. Which is apparently very intense. So, yeah. Since he's worried about him, he asks Toa, Setsuna, and Hisui to go up to where Song and Moroku are now living. And just guard the place. Keep an eye on everything and keep them safe. Toa and Setsuna, obviously, they don't mind. But Hisui... He kinda... He doesn't really want to. He doesn't really respect Moroku very much. He thinks he's greedy and kind of selfish. Yeah. They just, they don't see eye to eye, the two of them. Which is sad. So, yeah. It's unfortunate. Uh, we then see Baroha as well. She is at a different temple, and she is guarding another monk. And she's very elated because even if no demon shows up there, she's apparently still gonna get paid. So, yeah. <laughs> Then we finally see Moroku in his training. He's got his hair longer, he's wearing white robes, and he's just going at it. We see a whole training montage, and yeah, he looks pretty good. He's working his butt off. And it, it makes total sense, because even in the first episode of Yashihime, he did remark how he wishes he still had the wind tunnel because it gave him an edge in battle, but without it, yeah. I mean, he's grateful to be rid of it, I'm sure, obviously. Because if he didn't get rid of it, it would have killed him. <laughs> so, he's happy that it's gone, but he does wish to be strong enough to protect his wife, his children, and of course, his friends. So, that's why he's doing this. Because even though he didn't have the wind tunnel, he still tried to slay demons, but it, it just, yeah. One day he ran into one, and it did not go well, so that's why he decided to do this. So, yeah. We then see Sango and one of his and or one of her and Moroku's daughters, Yokuto, I think. 
I hope I'm saying that right. I'm probably not. But yeah, we see one of the twins. And she comes to ask Sango if there's a message from her father. And she says no. Which is a little sad. But it was so good to see Sango and hear her voice. And yeah. We then see the twins and Hisui arrive. And he introduces them to his sister. And yeah. He, she kind of explains why Hisui doesn't really respect their father and everything. Yeah. And Toa tries to make everyone else understand, but they're kind of lost in the analogy she used. So yeah. They then head up the mountain and meet up where Moroku is in his training. And he instantly seems to recognize Setsuna, but she doesn't recognize him. And Toa introduces herself and yeah. And he tries to talk to Hisui, but they just... They still kind of butt heads a little bit, but they are gonna watch over him and guard him. So, there's that at least. Then, shortly after, Totetsu does arrive, and he definitely wants to see Moroku. So, the twins have to go on the offensive. And, yeah, Totetsu starts sucking everything in around him, and it's not very good. <laughs> they do, the twins do fine, they do alright, but yeah, they, they do have to kind of try very hard to not get sucked in. Toa does something pretty clever though. Because she notices Totetsu kind of has to taste everything that he sucks in, she decides to throw, I think it was, uh, habanero sauce? Yeah, hot sauce. <laughs> she throws it while he's sucking stuff in and he has to taste it and boy does he not like it. It's way too spicy for him. So yeah. Seeing this though, and noticing that his ability is similar to the wind tunnel, he tells Hisui to try and use some of his Demon Slayer poison that he usually has on him, and try to make him basically swallow it. Sort of like how the Sun Yosho used to work on him, how if he would suck them into his wind tunnel, he would get sick and nearly die from it. So, yeah. Basically, that's Moroku's idea. He notices, okay, this is definitely similar to the wind tunnel, so this should work. So yeah. And he, so he does it. He goes in, and he does swallow it. Totetsu does go to swallow it, but he spits it right back out. And unfortunately, Hisui gets hit by the poison. So, ugh, not good. He gets affected by it. So, Moroku and everyone grabs him and takes him to safety. And that's when Setsuna does remember him, and remembers that he is a powerful monk. And she asks him to undo the seal that is apparently on her arm. And Moroku's at first reluctant, like, I don't know if that's such a good idea. But then she's like, look, you don't want to get eaten, do you? And Moroku is like, uh, yeah, no. No, I do not. So he does it. And good thing too, because Toa's still trying to fight him off and is kind of unsuccessful. <laughs> She's still trying to not get sucked in, but yeah. That's when Setsuna goes in and lets herself get bitten, after Moroku uses himself as bait as well to lure him out. But yeah, Totetsu bites Setsuna's arm, and her blood is apparently poisonous, and we see that she is in full demon mode. Although she has way more control over that form than Inuyasha ever did. So that's interesting. That's, remember when Inuyasha would go full demon, he had no control. He would... He could not stop himself sometimes. He just... Yeah. He was bloodthirsty, his eyes were red. Sesuno doesn't seem to have that problem. She seems to have more control. So yeah, this is apparently an ability that... Sashomaru also had, this poisonous blood. But yeah, tasting this, Totetsu immediately lets go and tries to spit it out and everything and he runs off so good <laughs> they managed to chase him off but Setsuna she can feel like it's the, her demonic blood is starting to overpower her so she has Moroku redo the seal on her arm and we see it's the same chant that she mentioned in the third episode about when you see the Erat slay the Erat when you see your parents, slay your parents, something like that. I forget exactly how it goes, but that poem. So yeah. And she goes back to her normal self. 
And Toe's kind of amazed by it. She's like, whoa. I didn't know you could do that. What was that? And Sesuno's like, I don't really know, but, you know, you might have this ability too. So, yeah. And Toa, being a half-demon as well, obviously does. Because I, I guess any half-demon can go full demon mode if pushed too hard. But yeah. So, interesting, right? And then Hisui wakes up. He seems all better. And we see that he's starting to respect his father because he chose not to run away from battle that time. He stayed and stuck with it and fought with them, even though he could have run away. He thought he did run away when he actually went to get his staff earlier in the episode, but no. And he starts to have some respect. So yeah, Toa Setsuna and Hisui kind of say their goodbyes to Moroku and let him resume his training. And of course, they also say goodbye to Hisui's sister. But before they fully leave the mountain and where Sango and Moroku are living, Hisui decides to stop by their house and see his mother. And that's when we fully see Sango. She looks as wonderful as ever. And she's still working hard as ever. Aside from being a wife and mother, she is still working hard making Demon Slayer weapons for Kohaku. Because we see she's made some brand new masks for them. Which is fantastic. Because those are always handy. Especially for situations like they were just in. <laughs> so yeah. It was so good to see her again. And she notes that he's, he's acting a little different. She notices that he's lightened up on his dad. So yeah, it was a very, very sweet moment. Very nice. But yeah, Hisui says goodbye, and that's when they all head off. Very, very nice. Unfortunately, then we see Moroha, and Takachiyo comes to her and lets her know that, well, the demon who is causing all these problems and eating monks has been slayed, so there really was no reason for her to be there, especially since nothing happened. So she's not getting paid. So poor Moroha. <laughs> Aww. I felt so bad. That is the only thing this episode lacked. Not enough Moroha. But yeah. That is where the episode ends. Pretty good episode. Pretty interesting to see Setsuna go full demon. Although the circumstances are a bit weird. Because we know for Inuyasha to have that happen. He would have to not have Tetsaiga. Tetsaiga would help keep his demonic blood in check. Setsuna never even had a weapon like that. I thought, at first, I thought maybe the blade of a Naginata was possibly made from maybe one of Sushomaru's fangs? Like how Tetsaiga and Tensega were made from Toga's, right? And that's having something connected to him helped keep Inuyasha's demonic blood in check. But that's not the case. It's some kind of seal. Which is very strange. Gee, Moroku, why couldn't you have done that for Inuyasha sometimes? <laughs> I don't know, maybe his was even more powerful. Every half-demon is different, so maybe that wouldn't have worked. Who knows? But still, it's a little weird, but I accept it. It wasn't bad or anything. It's just different. So, yeah. But mostly, it was just good to see Song of Moroku again. It really, really was. I just wish Moroha got to meet them. Maybe someday. And, yeah. Seems like Moroku's going to keep going with this training until he's finished. But hopefully we see him in the season finale. Hopefully. And he's gonna be kicking some major butt. Hopefully along Inuyasha and Kagome again. And the children. That would be amazing. Please. That's what I want more than anything. But yeah. I think that will do it. Or... My episode review. Now, episode 14, we're apparently going to get some insight onto who started the fire that separated Toa and Setsuna. But, we will not be getting that episode until January 9th. So, no episode review next week, unfortunately. And the dub, I think, is also going on hiatus, sadly. I need to catch up on those ep episodes. Ugh. But yeah. Good episode. Looking forward to the rest. Very excited again to see where the series is going. I'm really hoping things stay interesting and we keep getting more awesome stuff like this episode and we see the old cast again. Even though I love the girls, trust me, I do. But mainly I just want to see Inuyasha and Kagome again and I want them to interact with their daughter very much. 
please buy the season finale. Can that happen? It better be season, not series finale. Gosh. But yeah. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, leave a like, share it around if you want. If you want to follow me on Twitter or support the channel on Patreon, both links will be in the description below. But yeah. Till episode 14. Which, again, will not be until January 9th. I will see you guys later.